Hello everybody, welcome to Oscar Rusty Buckets. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and drop a like on this video. I am trying to hit 100k subscribers by the end of the playoffs, so your subscription will be much appreciated. Also drop a like, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Hey, I'm doing a post-game recap for the first time in what feels like ever. I'm not even going to go through the whole spiel that I normally do about how, oh hey, I'm taking forever to do a, a post-game recap again because I don't feel like doing it ever anymore. Uh, that's just what it's been. I haven't felt like it most of the time. I've watched less games than normal, and when I have watched them, I haven't had the energy to do this. But here we are today because there was a Bulls game that I have to talk about, and I figured talking about a Bulls game would be better than talking about nothing. Uh, these shoes are incredibly dirty, and it is a disgrace, and they should not be here. I ordered a new pair. Everyone bitches about these shoes in the comment section. I ordered a new pair. It still hasn't arrived. It's been like a month. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But either way, don't worry. It's it's fine. The situation will resolve itself. Um, anyways, let's talk about this Bulls game versus the Atlanta Hawks. I wasn't expecting this game to be anything special. Although, with the way DeMar DeRozan had been playing pre-All-Star break, uh, it does not shock me that this game ended up being special because that man himself has been quite special as of late. If you did not, did not, did not know... Uh, DeMar DeRozan had seven consecutive games of 35 plus points on 50 plus percent shooting, which has only ever been done by Wilt Chamberlain up until now, who not didn't get to seven, he got to six. DeMar DeRozan did it again now at eight consecutive 35 plus point, 50 plus percent field goal percentage games. And if we look at this beautiful tweet from friend of the channel, my guy Three Cone, DeMar DeRozan is averaging 37 points, 5.5 rebounds, 5.8 assists on 58.3% shooting, that's field goal percentage I presume, over his last 8 games. And then he says these are video game numbers, which is absolutely true. 37, 5, and 6 on nearly 60% shooting over 8 games, and the Bulls are on a 6, I believe it's a 6 game win streak, right? Maybe it's 5. It's one of those two. I'm going to check uh, the NBA app real quick. It is a six-game win streak, and they are back atop the Eastern Conference yet again. I'm going to talk about this game outside of just Amar in depth here in a minute, but I have to talk about the way that he has been playing because that's kind of the primary focus here, and it's just because he's been doing this. Otherwise, I wouldn't talk about a Bulls game but he's literally playing so well so consistently like sometimes I'm f afraid that I'm covering the Bulls just because it's the Bulls but like this is genuinely historical shit that's happening so I kind of have to talk about it and it's not just me being biased to talk about it so DeMar DeRozan this game has 37 6 and 3 71 percent from the field uh just marvelous DeMarvelous DeRozan um man it, it's just incredible. He's this season. He's shooting like 50 plus percent from mid range as a whole. He's averaging 28 points per game along with five rebounds and five assists. His efficiency is unbelievable. Uh, I just can't say enough about how good DeMar DeRozan has been. And it's especially important as of late because this six game win streak. I mean, you take into consideration the Bulls have not had two of their five most key players. Um, after, after, yeah, after DeMar, Zach, and Vucevic, the next two most important players are Lonzo Ball and Alice Caruso, and those guys have not played in a long time. Alice Caruso looked like he was about to be back, and then that Ted Cruz-looking motherfucker had to pull him out of the sky. But anyways, the team has not been healthy, not to mention Patrick Williams, who hasn't been here since, like, game number nine of the season. But the Bulls, outside of Patrick, have not been healthy since mid-December, and this would be a very easy time for them to fall off. And there was a stretch of that happening where the Bulls were losing games. And it wasn't even like an angry, like, of course I was upset, but it wasn't like a, I'm mad at my team right now. I just kind of get it. They're too underhanded. We're playing so many guys who are not rotation level NBA players. Uh, I went to the Hornets Bulls game that was a start one, one or maybe the second game of this win streak. Um, and they were running lineups out there that was like, there are four non-NBA players on the floor right now. Like, what I mean by that is like, they don't have a future in the league. They're here right now, but this is not an NBA player. This is a, this is, these are a bunch of frauds. And I'm looking at this, these lineups and I'm like, Jesus Christ, DeMar DeRozan is out here with four scrubs 
and he is keeping the team alive in spite of that. While there are definitely other fingers to point in a positive direction in terms of how the Bulls have performed in spite of these injuries, DeMar DeRozan is easily the biggest factor because he has been pretty much single-handedly willing this team to win. This game, this Hawks game specifically, didn't seem like the Bulls were really going to win this one as they were getting bitched by Danilo Gallinari in the fourth quarter, which was absolutely pissing me off. But it seemed like they were losing all their momentum. And then DeMar DeRozan walks up the floor. This is like the last minute of the game. Goes up the floor, mid-range shot, makes it a one-point game. Goes up the floor again after a stop. Mid-range shot and one makes it a two-point game. They get another stop. Javante Green hits some free throws. And then like 20 minutes of them trying to figure out some shot clock issue and then the game was over. Uh, but DeMar DeRozan, basically a game winner. Like if we look at the play-by-plays, that shot happened with... Wait, let me... This stupid fucking NBA app starting in the, in the first quarter. Go to the end here. Okay, end period. Uh, DeMar DeRozan hit that shot with 15 seconds on the clock. So... I think that's enough, that's a little enough time to call that a game-winning shot. Um, and that would be his third of the year. I believe it was, it was only three, right? Because he had the Pacers and the Wizards one back-to-back, -back, but he hasn't hit a game-winner outside of that unless I'm forgetting one. I feel like I might be, but I'm not sure. Either way, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Basically, DeMar DeRozan is unbelievable. And I'm saying the same shit that, I've already, that everybody else has said. For like a 32-year-old player to be doing this, for him to be having the best season of his career, and it's not close at this age is truly weird and there are factors like the Bulls spacing is the best spacing he's ever had and um the fact that he has a secondary star next to him with Zach Levine has brought, brought some defensive pressure off of him granted he's done this in games where Zach Levine hasn't played because he's been in and out over this win streak uh those factors have helped him but at the end of the day, he's putting these shots in the basket, and there are some ridiculous shots. DeMar DeRozan is quickly becoming one of my favorite players of all time, and I love this Bulls team. As for some other people to credit over this run that the Bulls have been better than expected with all the injuries they've had, Nikola Vucevic is fucking back, and I can actually say that now. Now, I don't know that his stats were particularly outstanding in this game. He only had 12 points, and he shot poorly, but... Overall, he's been averaging like 25 for his last like 15 games on good efficiency. So I feel like he's back. Um, on top of that, Zach Levine was all right in this game. He was coming back from other than the All-Star game, not playing for a week. So uh, not too concerned about the fact that he was a little inefficient. And But over this run, it was Vucevic. It was Kobe White, who I believe averaged like 20 or something close to that over the same stretch as DeMar DeRozan was averaging 37. Uh, and last but not least, Ayo Desumu. If we're going to talk about this game individually, Ayo Desumu crossed up Trey Young. Had a really huge layup to get this team's momentum going in the fourth quarter before Gallo started fucking with that. Hit back-to-back -back corner threes and locked up Trey Young anytime they matched up. Pretty much anytime Trey Young scored, I'm not counting getting to the free throw line. I think he got a couple of fouls on Io. Just putting a bucket up, Io locked him up every time. And he made it, it wasn't even just putting shots up. There were a couple of times where he straight up prevented Trey from putting shots up. Trey absolutely got shut down by Io Desumu today. And overall, Trey shot three for 17 from the field. He got 11 free throws, but a couple of those were bullshit, as you know. Um, Feels like the NBA's anti-foul baiting thing kind of disappeared. They were really in on it, and then it just gradually went back to the way it was. Uh, but the reason the Hawks ended up being in this game, in spite of this great showing from pretty much everybody involved, was Danilo Gallinari and Bo uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Bogdan almost hit a three that would have broke my heart. Luckily, Vucevic got a good contest on it. And uh, Gallinari... I wonder how many points he actually had in the fourth quarter. It felt like he had like 20 points in the fourth quarter. I'm not even joking. And like basically all of the shots that he hit to get to the 26 points that he had in this game were like fadeaways out of the post. He hit like five of them bitches in the fourth quarter and it was driving me insane. He legitimately looked like Dirk out there. Uh, but yeah, this game was 
really just Hawks kind of scraping by offensively because Trey Young, other than playmaking, was not contributing positively. And for the Bulls, they just kind of leaned on DeMar to be great, and everybody else was just kind of okay. Oh, one player to talk about for the Bulls, Tristan Thompson. You know what I said about uh, non-NBA players being in a lineup with DeMar DeRozan? One of those non-NBA players was routinely Tony Bradley, who I'm sorry to say because he seems like a nice guy, just not a good backup center. Tristan Thompson comes in today and he was phenomenal. He had two really big dunks. He had 11 points and six rebounds in just 13 minutes of action. And he was just really good. Had a couple of plays where he was a good rim protector, got a steal. Uh, I believe two of those rebounds were offensive. Really, really good contribution by him. So yeah, it's nice to have him as an actual NBA level center as a backup. Other than Daniel Tice uh, for like 20 games last year, the Bulls have not had a NBA level backup center since Joe Kim Noah was coming off of the bench. So it's nice to have it now. Uh, and that was, that was a long time ago, by the way. That was like 2015 or 2016 when that ended up happening. But yeah, um, the Bulls, fantastic. DeMar DeRozan, the primary tar tar top... top <laughs> topic of this video fantastic uh that's all i had to say so yeah hopefully i'm going to start getting around to doing these post recaps more especially as the season starts to get uh more tight in terms of playoffs uh seating and all that but yeah that is it goodbye